Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Nerdy Old Man Podcast. This is the old bald man, Chad, and we absolutely love conventions. Yes, sir, we do. We love being able to get into those big groups with all those folks that think and believe the way that we do and enjoy the same things we do. Uh, we're hoping those things come back this year, and as we're going to talk about today, isn't that right, Redneck Wes? That is absolutely true. Um, you know, conventions, it's been a big part of my life for a while. Uh, started out in comics and moved into cosplay and other things and got my wife and my kids into it so it's for us it's a family affair and we really enjoy conventions and one of our favorites uh if not the best convention in the world it's pretty dang close uh fanboy expo and uh i'm really excited because we've got dave from fanboy on the show with us today and we're going to be talking about all things nerdy and geeky so dave thanks for being on the show and just we're going to kick it over to you. Just, you know, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you and and all of this awesome Fanboy Expo goodness. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, uh, appreciate you having me on the show. Uh, I'm David. I'm the, the promoter slash producer of the Fanboy Expo events. Uh, and we've been, uh, we've been doing Fanboy. First year was 2012. And uh, we were in the little Chilahawi Park. Uh, I, don't, I forget what the name of the Over at the Jacobs Building. building. Yeah, Jacobs Over Building. Over at the yeah. Jacobs yep. Building, that's what it is, yeah. Um, and uh, that's where we did the first couple of years, and uh, I got my butt kicked doing it the first couple of years. Well, I mean, and since then, a few other times, but because uh, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. So now that we're almost 10 years into it, I, I think I... I know a little bit more than I did back then, but uh, it's been quite the ride over the last nine years. Yeah, so you, your first show was actually here in our local area in Knoxville. Is that correct? In Knoxville, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, and and uh, the it was just kind of one of those things. Uh, there used to be an old show in Knoxville called AdventureCon. Yes. And uh, uh, it was at the time it was a decent sized show. And uh, back, I mean, it doesn't even seem like it's that long ago, but back around the 2010s, um, there was only a couple of really big shows across the country, you know, Dragon Con in San Diego and um, and a, a couple others uh, across the country. But most shows, a big show was, you know, five to 7,000 people over the course of a weekend. And Adventure Con... Uh, was kind of right in that realm of around five, 6,000 people. And uh, a buddy of mine um, was basically the manager of the convention. He worked for a company that, uh, the company that owned the convention. And he, uh, uh, I would take a table there as an autograph dealer every year, basically to be able to go out and hang out with him a little bit and, and see him. Right. And every year for this little town and uh, this little Knoxville town with 5,000 people, I did more business than I could do at a, uh, a big sports convention or, you know, something like that. So I, I came every year and, and participated and, you know, got to hang out with him or whatever. Well, um, I don't know exactly when, but they stopped doing it. Company broke up, all that kind of stuff. So I just said to, uh, yes. So I went to Adam and said, uh, uh, let's start a convention, and he thought I was nuts, and I was because I didn't know what I was doing. But um, we started. Uh, I started Fanboy uh, in. Oh, well, I guess it was late 2011. I started planning it, and we were going to have it at the Grand Hotel in uh, Pigeon Forge because, again, I had no idea what I was doing. Right. And uh, but the Grand Hotel was going to basically give us the space. So I was like, well, shoot, that's a win. Right. And. In, uh, and we were going to have it like in May of 2012. Well, like in March of 2012, uh, we got a message from the Grand saying, hey, uh, they're tearing us down, so sorry, can't have a oh. <laughs> oh, that's a kick in the gut. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was like, I mean, I mean, like, we're, we already had guests announced. We were, we were rolling. And uh, so we moved it to, uh, to the Jacobs building for that fall, and... I just got, I mean, I got kicked in the teeth 
I thought, oh, at the end of that oh, that Sunday, I thought, oh, geez, my wife's going to leave me. Cause... Never, never again. <laughs> uh, never again. <laughs> I just blew it. So, um, but the... But the thing was, is that uh, for the, you know, 1,300 people that we sold tickets to, it was a fantastic convention. The problem yeah. was I needed to probably sell around 3,000 tickets to, to make <laughs> my money back. So, um, But it was a positive enough experience as far as how it went that I thought, well, shoot, I, I'm knee deep in this now. Let's give it another shot. So uh, that kind of kicked it off. And, uh, and we, you know, built it from there. And if you take COVID out of the out of the mix, uh, we are we're tr- we were trending towards being uh, not one of the really really big conventions, but the biggest convention for a market the size of Knoxville. Right. So, um, but and then we got kicked in the teeth again with uh, with the COVID. So. Right, right, and, and and since we're on that right now, and we'll go into some other things, you know. COVID obviously killed a lot of a lot of stuff as far as get-togethers and conventions and things, but but you figured out a way to adjust your uh, your business plan and and push forward. And I know you got you got uh, conventions planned for this coming year, but you what did you do to um, to compensate for that as far as keeping things rolling? Well, we had. Uh, once it hit last March, uh, we had rescheduled for the fall, not knowing what was going on. And then when it became evident that uh, there wasn't going to be conventions in 2020, um, we had – I went through a really, really rough spot of trying to figure out what to do, but also uh, giving back people's refunds when if they wanted a refund because I, it was just really, really difficult uh, about a month of just really, really – it was really rough on me. That had to be a logistics and, nightmare. I mean, just oh, it was, trying to deal it with was, that. It was awful. Imagine imagine uh, doing all the planning that you would do to make money, but you're doing the same thing, but you're giving all the money back. Oh, you know? so, gosh. So it, it, yeah, it, it's it not was, how it's uh, supposed to it work. This is not how it's supposed to work. Exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, I really felt like this is not my money. Um so uh, uh, I really feel, felt like this it was their money. So if they needed it back, we, we needed to give it back. And I'm very appreciative of the people that stuck with us uh, and are, are you know taking their tickets for this year. Um, but what we did was uh, we decided to go out there and basically connect the fans with the celebrities through private signings. And I know there's a lot of companies doing um, uh, like the virtual stuff, and I just didn't feel like that really fit the way we did stuff. Right. Um, so we were more about just connecting them to be able to get their stuff signed um, or to get their product done, you know. So, and that was very successful for us from August all the way through December. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and that, I mean, that's impressive. When I saw you guys doing that, I was like, man, this guy's keeping it rolling. And that's important because um, I've been to a few different conventions, but coming to yours is, it, it's, I don't know, it, it, it feels, uh, it's a little bit more laid back and feels more, uh, I guess, like family, not, not necessarily fa- family oriented family, which it is, but it's, it's a more comfortable environment. And I think kind of right. you've built a, or at least in our area here, and I'd like to go, I'm hoping to go to one of your other shows this coming year, but when, when you go in that place, everybody is just kind of, it, it, it's like you belong. And the fact that you were able to still keep, uh, feeding, um, your customers with the opportunity to uh, have that con experience with actually having to being able to go to the con that year. And I think that's fabulous and, and, and definitely customer oriented. And I like that a lot. Well, the other thing we did was uh, one thing I had noticed uh, going on to some of the other uh, con sites when they did the virtual stuff, that the prices were outrageous. So the same, the same guy that you'd pay 40 bucks for at a, at a convention was eighty, ninety, a hundred dollars, and I thought, and I thought, man, we can't do that. Like, I can't, I can't have everybody expect everybody to pay a hundred bucks for a forty dollar guy. No. So what we did was, um, uh, we just kept it as low as we possibly could, which meant that I didn't. I mean, I really didn't make any money off of it, but it wasn't about so much making the money as it was keeping fanboy rolling. And keeping everybody engaged in what we're doing. 
But yeah, you got some loyal fans. I mean, Wes sings your praises all the time, and whenever you get a chance, if to, if you, if you want to waste some time and listen to some of our other shows, <laughs> the dude the dude talks about fanboy almost every single episode. He's well, huge uh, fan. So you've built you've built this this uh, this tight group of uh, of people that are loyalist uh, to your uh, to your organization, and that's fantastic. Well, I think the, I got a funny story to tell on Dave was. Uh, it was the first show that we were at, and I want to say it was, oh, uh, I want to say the 13 show, and uh, the my daughters, the twins were really little, and uh, you know they they were having having fun, even though they weren't really old enough to know exactly what all was going on, but they're seeing people dressed up and and everything, and I I honestly don't know how I think I was looking on the fanboy expo website and i had seen a picture of dave i don't know just scrolling through looking at stuff and here he comes walking by and so i stop him and i'm like excuse me are you the are you the man that runs fanboy and i just see this just this look of horror because i'm sure he was on his way to deal with a problem he's like here's a guy just fixing to throw a problem on me and i was just like you know thank you for putting on a family friendly show because you can bring your kids to fanboy Absolutely. and there's something for them and the, you know, like my wife goes with me, and there's something for her, there's something for me, and and I know we've said it's it's our own brand of nerdiness, you know, because there is something for everybody at Fanboy. I mean, and so that was that was a funny little story I had because uh, you can see the the look of relief on Dave's face because I'm like I said, I'm sure he was dealing with like 20 other problems, and then he gets stopped by some random guy. Yeah. <laughs> What, what was I nice to you though? Oh yes, you were very nice. So you you had you had the customer service face on. You know, so. Which I will compliment you heavily on being nice to Wes when you see him. That's sometimes it's difficult to do, and I've known him for thirty years. Yeah, so, well, you know. So Dave, tell us. You know, you started in in the in the old Jacobs Building, and you've expanded to the new convention center and things here in Knoxville. But I'm looking at your website now. And it looks like you got some shows planned here, some other places, man. Yeah, we actually, uh, uh, it, rather than pulling back and kind of uh, hiding, we decided to go the opposite route and decided it was a, a, a good opportunity for us to go out and uh, uh, try and expand, expand the, the brand just a little bit. Um, and so we've got Orlando, which is not new for us. Uh, we... <clears throat> We pulled out of Florida for a few years because there was a, a lot of competition going on down there uh, a few years back. And so we kind of pulled out until, I, I mean, and literally my, my strategy was let's pull out until these, these other uh, big cons kind of kill each other. And then, right. uh, and then we'll, we'll stroll back in. So that's what we did. We're going back down to Orlando. Uh, we're going up to Columbus because uh, uh, the show that the big show that was in Columbus is out of Columbus. So we're, we're going up there to kind of, try and uh, take over that market and then we're going to uh indianapolis with a uh, a sci-fi show so that's that's pretty cool i mean that's that's uh you're jumping from you know having to pull things back because of covid right back into the fire and that's awesome i mean yeah you know in, in hitting some of these uh, markets that have lost cons to be able to give this opportunity back to people uh, because it, I mean, you go through and you read some of the Facebook things and the different forum stuff for all these different cons and, and, you know, uh, nerdy geek pop culture genre type people. And, and, and there are a lot of people really, really hurt about not getting that con fix for a lack of a better word, because I think for a lot of people, uh, those type of um, events make them feel like, you know, that's where they belong. And they didn't have that this past year. So that's pretty awesome that that you're expanding and being able to bring that to some people that missed out on that last year. Yeah, and I think the other the other advantage that we have, um, which was not an advantage uh, per se before COVID, uh, but the advantage we have is I it, we're just a small little mom and pop organization that sometimes looks like it's a bigger organization. And... Uh, uh, so I don't have to. I don't have this big staff that I have to uh, to pay, um, and I don't have uh, all these big fees that I have to pay, and I have to get twenty thousand people to show up. Right, and it, and you do get that feeling like it, this is uh, when you go to one of these shows. It's a it's a not a corporate environment. I guess I don't know if that's a good analogy for it or not, but it doesn't feel like it's so expansive that you're just a number. 
And, uh, right, right. And, and, and I know some guys that have gotten tables <clears throat> to uh, vendor tables and things at your shows and, and they sing the praises too, because they've done it at other places. And they're like, you know, this is, this is just a, a, a more low key, more uh, friendly environment. And, and that's a wonderful thing. Well, I think too, the, a, well, a that, lot of it has to do with the fact that you, you care about the, the fans, you know, the, the customers yeah. that are coming to the show, you actually care and you try to do things uh, in addition to just, okay, you know, pay, pay your money, go stand in line, get your autograph, you know, go buy this, go buy that and out the door. <laughs> right. You actually care about the people that are coming you in the experience I, that they're having. And it, and it kind of, it, it starts from the top down. So my attitude is what I expect, uh, the volunteers and, uh, the staff to have. And so if, if my attitude is we got to just make as much money as we can, then that's going to be their attitude. And that's not what I want. For me, the most important people uh, to make happy and to reach are the attendees. And I think a, a lot of these conventions uh, and events focus on the celebrities and the celebrity managers and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, all those people are important, but they're all a means to an end. And that end is to make sure that the attendee has a positive, good experience, period. Yeah. Right. And, and, and you can feel that. And I can feel that from, from going there and, and, and folks that are listening. And if you haven't been to one of these shows and you live in one of these cities, check it out because, um, th I've been to some other shows and I won't name them, but there's one where <clears throat> when you go in the area where they uh, the celebrities are, man, if, if you're not constantly moving, if you stop for a minute, they're quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes, volunteers literally scream at you <laughs> to move. And I, and I, and I want to punch them in the throat every single time. And, but not it, not a fanboy. That's not the feeling. Uh, the guys that, that they bring in and volunteers and staff, they're friendly folks and they're there to help you and they're there to enjoy it as well. And you definitely get that feeling. Well, and the other thing too is, I mean, if you've got, uh, thousands of fans coming, you've got to think about it. Somebody like a uh, Carrie always, let's just say, and I picked Carrie always because he was a pain, um, for <laughs> quite, I mean, he was great. Don't, don't get me wrong. He was great to the fans, but he was a pain to, to meet his needs to meet the fans. Um, but Carrie always comes and he signs, I don't say 500 autographs throughout the whole weekend. Well, that's still a fraction of the people that are there at the show. Some people don't have the money to go spend $50 to meet carry always they should exactly. still be able to see maybe they, they're not going to come up and get a picture with them or anything like that but they want to be able to see carry always they want to be able to go to the q a they want to be around carry always to get their experience because that's all they can afford to do we want to give them the opportunity to do that and if somebody like carry always can't do that then don't come to my show i'll pick right. somebody else that wants to be around them so and again and that that's just another example of uh fans come first you know uh, right. Yeah. It, it, you're, you know, you sacrifice some of these these folks that are just not fan friendly for the sake of the ones that are, because in the long run, you're building a, uh, a relationship with your guests where they want, you know, I'm not going to miss this show. If I've only got so much money to spend to go to a show this year, I'm not missing Fanboy Expo, wherever it is that you live. And and that's a good thing. Right. I mean, yeah, I, I felt that way myself. I'm like, yeah, I'd like to go south to this other big con at some point, but. I'm going to save my money and I'm going to go to this one because it's, it's local. It's friendly. I can take my kids and, and I'm good to go. So that's, that's a great thing. And, and honestly, it's got the same things that the big shows a, have got. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. Right. And that, that's about, that's what I was about to say was honestly, if there's a guest that you want to see at, and it's at a big show, um, if they are going to be fan friendly and if their autograph is worth buying, you will see them at a fanboy eventually. If you don't see somebody at a fanboy, it's a, a couple of reasons. Number one is, um, that they're they're not going to be fan friendly, and so we don't want them. Right. Uh, number two is they're they're too expensive. You know, I would love to have somebody like a Chris Hemsworth or the Spider Man guy or whatever, but it just doesn't make any sense for any of us because we can't afford them. I, nobody wants to pay four hundred dollars for an autograph. You know. Right. Um, and then the other I, the other thing that is uh, less and less, but sometimes believe it or not, we have a hard time getting a celebrity to agree to Knoxville, Tennessee. Because they're really? just like Knoxville. Yeah, I don't uh, yeah. know where that is. So, uh, <laughs> and what are y'all talking about? Knoxville is a big city. <laughs> when, <laughs> when you grow up in but Podunk they, town like I, <laughs> Knoxville's huge. But they'll, 
if it's if it's not uh, Atlanta or Philadelphia or you know if it's not a big place like that, they're just not interested in going. It it happens less and less, um, but for a long time, uh, that's the way it was. I'll, and I'll give you a perfect example because it was a, ha- a happy ending to this. Um, uh, Brent, Sp- Brent Spiner from Star Trek Next Generation. The first time we asked him to come, he was like, Knoxville, why do I want to go there? Well, the, year, the next year, he agreed to come, and by the end of the weekend, he's like, man, I love this place. So yeah. <laughs> if we if we can get them there, they generally go, man, this is the best. So Right, and, you've, awesome. bu- and you've, bu- you've you're building that rapport with these folks, and <clears throat> now you're expanded to these other cities, and hopefully they're like, you know, he did us right in Knoxville. Uh, we'll hook up for Columbus or Orlando or Indianapolis. We'll hook up for those too. And then vice versa, maybe the uh, celebrities that have come to the bigger cities in your upcoming shows will be like, man, this worked out really well for me. Let's go see what that little East Tennessee town looks like, you know? And and, and, well, and it just kind of snowballs from there. I'd say pre-COVID, again, we keep having to say that, but pre-COVID... Uh, most of the agencies we dealt with would would basically say, uh, yeah, you can have whoever you want for Knoxville because Knoxville has now built such a reputation over the years for being a great city for them to come in and uh, uh, not only make money, but also it's a great town. So for the most part, uh, I can get to just about anybody I want. But like I said, a lot of times uh, it just doesn't make sense for us uh, in East Tennessee to have somebody that's going to be, you know, four or five hundred dollars for an autograph it just wouldn't make sense right yeah because you could put the you could put them up on your website and your facebook and things like that and go hey look at this guy or this girl that we're bringing in here but it wouldn't do any good if anybody couldn't afford to meet him just couldn't afford of, to meet him and, that, yeah, right. and, that, and that's what we that's what we have to look at is if do i want to have somebody like that there that takes up all the money on the floor for people and that's all they can do or do we want to have somebody that's a lot more fun and then you can go and enjoy other things. Go, you know, the dealers can make some money, and the celebrities can make some money, and everybody has a good time. You know, right. well, that was one thing that I liked. I know that on on Facebook you would periodically put, you know, who's someone you would like for us to try to get? Who was who's someone you would like to see? Uh, and I always thought that that was cool was the fact that you you had that interaction with the fans, and you're really picking their brains, seeing what what they would like. And a lot of shows don't yeah. do that. Yeah. It's the best. It's absolutely the best way to connect with the attendees because I mean it's their show. I I get the opportunity to run it, but it's 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 their show. It's 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 for all you guys out there. That your guys show, you guys are the ones that tell me what you want, and I can't. I don't know that unless I go out and say, hey, what do you guys want? You know. <laughs> right. Right. So uh, you're expanding to these cities here. You, what kind of really cool stuff, or, or the the Knoxville show? What kind of really cool stuff you got planning coming out uh, f- for these things that our that our folks might want to hear about? It's been a little bit more difficult this year, as you can imagine. So usually, in um, in Knoxville, usually we have seventy five percent of our uh, of our lineup announced by now, and I think we've only got three or four people announced and uh, a big part of that is uh, uh, it's it's harder to get the celebrities to commit to uh, to June so they're kind of like okay well I, I want to come but let's give it a couple more weeks until we find out you know how these vaccines are rolling out or how this is rolling out or blah 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 whatever so I'm hoping that within the next uh, month or so that we'll basically be able to have Knoxville set uh, and announced Oh, that'd be and awesome. um, yeah, and kind of move from there. Now, I will give a little inside track. Nobody knows yet because it's it just started happening this morning. It looks like we'll be moving uh, Columbus to the fall. Okay. So, um, and the reason being is uh, it, it's not safety related or anything like that. Uh, it's just the city of Knoxville and that convention center is just dragging their feet. So um, we, I can't go in and promote the show and expect people to show up with, for the show um, when they, they're not giving me projections on, uh, you know, what they think we can and can't do. So we're just going to, we, we had an opportunity to move it. So I think we're just going to move it. And you're talking about Columbus. That's the one you're talking about, correct? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. The Columbus show. Okay. Yep. And actually as soon as I'm off the phone with you guys, uh, I'll be talking to the convention center and getting an update um, from uh, uh, the, the health department on if, if there's any, anything new for, 
for Knoxville. But, but as of yesterday, uh, the the general manager of uh, of the convention center said that everything's looking good and we're moving forward. So uh, that's, that's awesome. That's, it should that, be good. That's, that's great news. That's good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah and then, and then the other cities, uh, Orlando and uh, uh, Indy, are fine. Like they they're a little bit later uh, in the year and their hotel shows. So they hotel shows have a different standard on uh what we can and can't do so i can i can deal directly with the hotel on how to make it uh how to make things work in both columbus and knoxville i have to deal with the convention center and the health department and the city and the mayor's office and blah blah blah, you know it just goes on and on and on oh yeah so it makes it it's just this big old you you cut one strand of red tape and there's another one and you cut that one and there's another one so um, it's it's just more difficult. And in uh, Columbus, Columbus is quite a bit bigger than Knoxville. I don't I don't have uh, the ability to to kind of uh, throw a fit like a toddler and get my way like I do in Knoxville. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to adjust your tactics <laughs> as as things I, progress. <laughs> I can almost guarantee you that uh, there's probably emails or text messages uh, in Knoxville saying, "Oh, Dave's throwing a fit again." So, um, <laughs> well, well, it, 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 at least at least the county mayor here understands your fan base, so <laughs> there, there's there's that, you know. So um, he, he does. Unfortunately, he has nothing to do with the convention center. So, that's true. It, boy, um, if he did, he though. can't help us out too much. <laughs> For those of you who don't that don't know, our county mayor is is Kane from WWE. So um, Glenn Jacobs. But so I'm looking here at your website um, and. So you got this destination sci-fi, and that's your Indianapolis show, right? Yes, correct. Okay, yeah, give us a little bit on that one. Uh, so is this uh, this science? Just obviously, I guess a stupid question by Chad, but science fiction uh, oriented, I would, I would guess. What made you go in that direction? Uh, well, what we did was uh, I really think that the um, uh, the hot thing to do for, and I could be totally wrong on this. Let me just throw that out there first thing. But I really think the hot thing to do uh, for the next few years is going to to be smaller, more targeted shows, because I think even after everybody gets vaccinated and after we kind of get rolling again, I think a large part of the population is still going to be gun shy to go to a big, you know, uh, Dragon Con style um, event. But they're still going to want to do events. So what I what I've decided to do is on some of our events, um, I call it's I would call it a hybrid event. Because uh, uh, it's a it's a combination of like a boutique show and a regular you know Comic Con style event. So a boutique show, um, there's a company called Creation. They do all the Star Trek and they do all the supernatural events, whatever. And it's very boutiquey in the fact that it it is completely targeted towards whatever that show or genre that they're doing is. And you get there, uh, you can meet the celebrities. You they've got a, some events around that. And then you kind of are like, well, what else do we do? And that, you know, it's it's over. That's it. And it's a, it's it's a higher price ticket to to go meet the people that you want to meet. Well, we decided to take that format and mix it with our fanboy format. So basically, have sci-fi and fantasy, but still have all those cool things that you get to do at a fanboy, you know, um, and all those interactions that you kind of get at a regular pop culture event, like one of like you do in Knoxville or whatever. Put that all together, but with half the fans that you would have at a regular convention yeah and that might be a uh, that might be a really good uh a good tool there to get people to come in because you're right i I think that people will be a little bit a little bit skittish about hitting some bigger stuff um now i mean i i I know that these things are going to change and and people are going to pack into your to your cons but that's a great idea i really like that i just thought that was cool with the alien and on your logo here in the little spaceship i think man that's pretty neat okay now dave i want to ask is this going to be more like the uh the halloween show that we did in knoxville where it's 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 yes. more of a theme yes uh, ho- like the halloween show or the uh totally awesome weekend that we did the the 80s which show, was which a lot of fun because the... i'm an 80s fan <laughs> right and and the the showdown in orlando is actually uh gonna be kind of a totally awesome weekend and what that means is uh that that doesn't mean that we we're not going to have a guest outside of that genre it just means that the focus is going to be on the 80s or like in indie the focus is going to be on sci-fi and uh um and and fantasy stuff that i mean if we get the opportunity to have somebody there 
that uh, may not exactly fit, but still fits because everybody's going to love them, we're still going to book them and have them. Oh, obviously. Absolutely. But what else that you can you think of that, uh, that our listeners might want to know about Fanboy Expo this coming year at any of your locations? I think, well, here's the thing that we're, we're working really hard to make sure that we make it a safe environment for everybody. Um, so we will have a lot of that stuff, the standard stuff that you see. Um, I don't know how things are going to look by summer, but you'll probably see some kind of temperature checks, which uh, makes everybody feel good. I'm sure you're going to have to wear a mask. Um, we'll have lots of uh, of plastic shielding up for to block everybody lots of social distancing kind of stuff I'm, I'm actually flying out to knoxville in a couple weeks to work with the convention center and uh uh the decorator the pipe and drape guys to figure out how we set our floor plan uh for june because we're probably gonna have to widen the aisles and do things like that but for the most part we're gonna try and make it as normal of a fanboy as we possibly can uh, that's so great. when you come you're just gonna have the fan fanboy experience just with less people right so. right and and that's okay too because people will get a chance to do it and and i truly believe that, that you know that, that we'll get back to where we were and uh but you're still still providing the uh the fix for us that love this kind of stuff so that's great that, that's great that it's still gonna happen yeah and some of the things that that'll change is I, i'm trying to work out how we're going to do uh photo ops without people having to uh um, you know, without having to wear your mask during the photo op, uh, creative ways that we can social distance during the photo op, like um, uh, ways that we can position the celebrity so it's it's more of a scene that they're doing with you rather than just uh, standing next to the celebrity so that they can still be a part and still get a cool picture. So lots of things that we're doing, again, to make sure that uh, our focus is on the fan experience. And making sure that even though we've got this COVID thing looming over our heads, uh, we're still going to make it safe for you guys, and you're going to be able to go out and have a good experience. Uh, well, that was the story. question I was going to ask: was you know how the fan interaction with the celebrities would be as far as like the photo ops and things. So it, it's really good to know that you're you're trying to come up with a creative way that the fans still have that experience. And I think people will really appreciate that, you know, because honestly it would kind of suck if you got a you know you're wearing your mask and they're wearing their mask and it's like who'd you get a picture with uh i'm not sure (laughs) right and a a lot of that will just have to do uh we'll have that opportunity but a lot of it has to do with how comfortable the 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 guest the celebrity guest is um with the situation there's going to be some that uh will do photo ops but you're going to have to wear a mask and if you if that's okay then you'll get your photo op if it's not don't get a photo op it's you know it's that simple. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's just another step back to some normality, I guess, you know, from going no shows at all to a show with, you know, some obvious important uh, health restrictions. And then maybe the next year we're back to normal. Uh, so, but right. it's still been, it's people still being able to do it is what's important. And I think it's probably important. It's obviously important to you as a business owner, but, and it's obviously important to the fans, but I think it's important to the celebrities who, um, this is part of their world as well. Yeah, well, and a lot of them, this is the way they make a, a big chunk of their money now, especially so, uh, some of the older and retired ones. Um, and they haven't been able to do that the same way as they did, uh, you know, in 2019. So they're anxious to get back to it as well. But they wanted, obviously, they wanted to, to do it safely. Right. Wes, what else you got, buddy? Well, I mean, I, I was going to make sure that we, uh, we announced that... Uh, you know, we're excited that you're coming back to Knoxville. You know, we're going to have our conventions this year. Uh, and, and how cool it is that there's going to be a, a fanboy in Columbus now. Fanboy's back in Orlando. And then Fanboy is doing a show in Indianapolis. And, and, and if I'm not mistaken, that's the first time you've done an Indianapolis show. Right, Dave? Yeah. The Actually, when I went and looked at the property, that's the first time I had ever been in Indianapolis. So, um it was, uh, and I have to give a, a, a big shout out to uh, uh, my buddy Bill, who runs the Days of the Dead uh, conventions, because um, he's the one that kind of linked me up with the, the Marriott there and uh, helped me get the deal done. So that's awesome. I mean, yeah. 
No, that's good. And well, what's interesting is, it, of course, obviously we we live in the Knoxville area, so that that's our home show of yours. But we're a little biased. But <laughs> we, we, well, it, these other ones are really not that far away. <laughs> so those are those are decent, uh, you know, weekend road trips for people that are in an area. But we do have listeners that are from the outside area, so definitely check uh, check these out. It, it 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 you know, Wes, it 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 definitely looks like Dave has has, has figured out how to keep fan uh fanboy going through the covid and he's expanded to some all other places and he's well prepared for all of those things to happen but is he prepared for the nerdy old men rapid fire question session Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, Dave, this is the part in the show that we, we ambushed Jay, Dave with this. Uh, uh, this is the part in the show where we, we just kind of ask uh, some some questions and just kind of give us, you know, your first response just, you know, off the top of your head. And, Wait, and is, this the, is this the part where I get to cuss? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's wide open. You can open bleep and bleep, bleep all the bleep you want. <laughs> we're, we're old guys. It's wide open. <laughs> Yeah, we're all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Wes, you can you can begin, sir. Okay. Well, since we were talking about Indianapolis and the how it's going to be a sci-fi themed show, um, what is your fi- favorite sci-fi series? Uh, are we talking movies or are we talking TV or either? whatever you want, either or. I I am a huge Star Wars fan, uh, obviously, but outside of Star Wars, because everybody is, um, I really, really like the original Battlestar Galactica, but I think it's more because uh, I was a little kid when it would come on, and I just was mesmerized by it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're correct, sir. I like it. And the Reimagined series. Big fan. So that's, It's that's not Firefly, you know but that's I okay. Have, <laughs> I, you know what? I have never... I have not watched the uh, the 2004 Battlestar Galactica ever. I I have to, but I know I'll just get. Uh, I just I don't have the time to just sit down and binge watch it. And that's what I'm going to want to do. So I haven't done it yet. Oh yeah, I um I've trust me and Wes knows I love that show. Seen them he all. Loves that show. I, I've got a poster behind me, a cast poster of the entire cast uh, in a recreation of the Last Supper from the Bible, and I've got almost all of them to sign it. <laughs> so love that. Hint, show. hint, Dave. <laughs> still, still missing a couple. We can talk offline. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. all right, <laughs> question number two. You have a choice. You must enlist in either G.I. Joe or Cobra. Who do you pick? Oh, G.I. Joe. You got to Yo, do the right thing. You got to do the right thing all the time. Well, that's the, that's the first wrong answer for the day. All right, Wes, go ahead. <laughs> uh, okay, Dave, I, I'll, I'll give you an easy one after that difficult one. Marvel or DC? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, Marvel, if we're talking, uh, if, if we're talking about, as a whole of Marvel, if we're talking about actually reading the comics, DC. Because, we'll call it a girl. <laughs> uh, well, and I'll tell you why real quick. Uh, Marvel has just done a better job at uh, their character development. DC is just uh, dark and just bleh when it comes to, to the actual DC universe. But the actual comics, I think, uh, are, uh, are better with DC as far as how deep they go. You have redeemed yourself, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good old 80s cartoons. What was the best one? Um, it, it, well, this is a two-part answer. If sure. you asked me what the best one was when I was a kid, it was He-Man. I loved He-Man when I was a little kid. Um, if you ask me now, it's Transformers. There you, there you go. go. I, I agree with you that because I'm a huge <laughs> Masters of the Universe fan. I got a cabinet full of vintage toys behind me here, but trying to rewatch that show <laughs> in, a, in my mid forties, it's 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 awful. It doesn't <laughs> make a lot of yeah. sense. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, but but it's trans rough. but Transformers and GI Joe do translate. So yeah, I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> okay, Wes, bring us okay. home, buddy. Okay. Oh, are we are okay. No, we're go ahead. No. Oh, no, okay. Ahead, I was gonna say, are we bringing it home already? Jeez, put me on the spot there. Oh my. My goodness, uh, I, I'm going to ask you, Dave. Um, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, mind reading. <laughs> <laughs> it would help out in those it negotiations. Would, <laughs> uh, it would help me in so many different ways because nobody uh, actually says what they're thinking. So, mind reading, I, absolutely. 
I figured you'd want multiple man's power so that you could be in different places at once when everything's going on. <laughs> no, but see, here's the thing. If I could read minds, then I could know if somebody was actually going to do what they said they were going to do, and then I'd be okay. I could just put them in. Oh, okay. You know, well, I didn't, put them. didn't think about it that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's good. I, I like that. All right, my last one is, again, another enlistment. The Rebellion or the Empire? Uh, rebellion again. You got to do what's right. Every time. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, and then I'll I'll bring what? it home with our last and and possibly our most favorite question. Uh, does pineapple go on a pizza? Listen, uh, I don't need to tell you. I believe people should be able to to do what they want to do. If you want to put pineapple on your pizza, put pineapple on your pizza. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I'll give you a little. I'll give you a little tip because I used to work for Round Table Pizza when I was in college. Pepperoni and pineapple, delicious. Really? There hmm. you go. Yes. I usually it's like go with the, the ham, spicy but with the sweet. Yeah, you got to try Ooh. pepperoni. I may have to do that. I, I, I think I, I'm I, going to Charlie's later on, Chad. I, I have an outstanding <laughs> idea now. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Dave, we really appreciate you coming on here today and talking with us, man. Uh, here's an opportunity we'd we'd like for you to um, to you know to, to plug the shows again, give people some information where they can find out information like they don't already know. But we do have some people that may not, so throw that out at us. Okay, as it stands, uh, well, you can check it all out at FanboyExpo.com. But we've got uh, Knoxville, June 25th through the 27th. Uh, Columbus was in July, but looks like we'll be moving that to the fall. Uh, so look out for those new dates. Uh, 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 we're we're going to have to rebook everybody, so look for that. Uh, Orlando is August 20th through the 22nd. And I can give you another little just uh, uh, scoop here. We just booked uh, Dress to Kill, the, uh, the KISS band that's in our local area. They're going to be playing for us down in, uh, in Orlando for one of the nights. Oh, and you so heard it here first, folks. There we go. Awesome. That's yeah. There, if you have if you haven't seen them, go online and check them out. They are fantastic. And then we've got Destination Sci-Fi September 10th through the 12th in Indianapolis. So awesome. Awesome. So go and follow uh, Fanboy Expo on Facebook. Uh, what other social media do you guys run there, Dave? Uh, Facebook. We've got an Instagram. We don't really do the Twitter. Okay. Um, but those are the two main ones. If anybody has any, uh, uh, if they have questions, you can just message it direct on Facebook. It'll, or you can send us uh, an email at info at fanboyexpo.com. Um, either myself or Adam or Joanna will uh, answer you to the best of our abilities. I did want to say one thing before we go out. Yeah. Um, in the Knoxville area, especially, don't forget to support East East Tennessee Children's Hospital. Uh, they. Uh, They've been going through a rough patch with the COVID, trying to get everything worked out. So make sure that you're uh, uh, sharing their stuff and uh, and supporting them. They're they're a big part of our community, and we we want to support them as much as we possibly can. Yeah, we got a minute. Let's let West. Let's talk about that for just a second before yeah, we close I, I, out, because that because that's important. That. I, I'm I'm a I'm a big a big fan of Children's Hospital. They they helped my son out a whole lot when he was having some troubles once upon a time. And and uh, let, let, let's address that real quick. Well, uh, they, he, he gave us opportunity because um, I do a lot of different cosplays and I, and I have a Captain America that I do. And uh, I made a, I've made a lot of friends over the years at Fanboy. And uh, Kayla and Cody reached out through, you know, Dave through them. And he's like, hey, we're, we're, we're going to go to Children's Hospital. Uh, can you do Captain America? Absolutely. And we've been half a dozen time i guess uh and i always get something out of it um i mean when you go in and people people in east Tennessee have a big heart and there's people that donate stuff i know through the hospital through fanboy i know dave you've donated some stuff um and when you're able to go in as the character and you you give the kid something i know um the the look on their face because i mean there's some really sick kids uh at children's mm -hmm. uh and i'm trying not to get a little choked up here guys <laughs> uh but they're ha having a rough time some of them are there for treatment some of them there you know maybe a surgery whatever 
And you can go in for a few minutes as a character, and they light up, and they'll start telling you everything that they know about that character, or this character, or this movie, this show. And to be able to give them a little something, whether it's an action figure, or a doll, or, you know, whatever. Um, I know that, uh, like, Guy Gilchrist has gone out with us, and he's done sketches uh, for kids, Um and I, I know that was something that, that means a lot to me, uh, to be able to be a part of that, to give back to the community. Uh, I know at Christmas, I'm going to tell this one on you, Dave. At Christmas, uh, because with COVID and the cancellation of the shows, uh, Dave wanted to find a way to give back. So he got um, people to, I don't I don't know if nominate's the right word, but to, to nominate uh, some Families that might need some help during Christmas. And things were donated, and we actually got to go out and help deliver uh, to that. And I know that that helped, and that meant a lot to those families, but also to me personally to be able to be a part of that. So uh, I do thank you for that opportunity, Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really awesome that uh, you've embraced East Tennessee and that you've embraced Knoxville. And I'm hoping that this can carry over to Orlando and Columbus and Indianapolis, that if there is a need, that in some small way, Fanboy Expo can help. And I just think that's commendable. I think it's awesome, and I really do appreciate it. Yeah, so make sure you guys, when you go on to Fanboy Expo and you buy your tickets for the upcoming shows, uh, you know, in the, in the Knoxville area in particular, after you buy your ticket, go over and... Uh, See if you can make a donation on the Children's Hospital website or something like that, and give a little um, back to the community as well. Because uh, you know, I, I know it's a focus of Dave and his his his, uh, his mission not only to bring good shows and provide a good service, but to to give something back. So, Dave, we appreciate you that for doing that as well. Absolutely, and we are uh, we are happy to do it. Um, it's become um, kind of the lifeblood of what we do there in uh, East Tennessee. And uh, a big thank you to Cheryl, uh, who leads up the volunteer services over there, because she's the one that uh, kind of helps us to make it happen. And when we, when you do support Children's Hospital through Fanboy, um, uh, your donation, or oftentimes even if it's you know like we do the uh, the auction for the signed banners and things like that, that money goes to volunteer services, and they use that for. Uh, for the kids and for their families. So uh, when I first was setting it up with Cheryl, uh, I said, Cheryl, I, I don't want us to be to just go into the general fund and help buy a new MRI machine or whatever. I, and I and it's obviously if they need an MRI machine, that's you know they need it. But I feel like there's there's big donors for that kind of stuff. There's big corporate donors that just say, hey, here's the equipment you need or whatever. There was a real need. Uh, for the lower level stuff, like families needing uh, uh, needing to be taken care of as far as food and and clothing go, if they have to stay for extra uh, an extra period of time, or like Wes said, um, going in there with action figures or going in there with gifts for the kids, all that stuff takes money. And uh, so, when you donate through Fanboy Expo most of that will go towards that kind of a thing, making sure that the families have a place to stay when they are there with their children, making sure the kids uh, have good clothes to wear, things like that. And we just, uh, we're just overjoyed to not only be able to provide that um, and help out with that, but also to have a place where uh, if those kids are able to come out and uh, and meet their favorite celebrities or meet their favorite characters, that they can do that. And if, if they can't, then we try to bring them to them. So. It's just been a great experience and um, the best of, of what we do for sure. Outstanding. So everybody, please remember that uh, when you come to these shows. And uh, we appreciate you, Dave. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Thanks for having me, guys. And I look forward to seeing everybody this summer. Yeah, you might see the uh, Nerdy Old Men podcast down there at the Knoxville show. You never can tell. So when you guys are uh, out, if, if you feel like there's somewhere you just want to go and you just feel like you need to belong... Go to a convention. In particular, go to Fanboy Expo. Right, Wes? That's right. Yeehaw. 